Hello, this is Josh Patel, and today I'm bringing you another interesting biology lesson. Today we are going to do Chapter 2, Chemistry of Life, Lesson 5, Enzymes. This will be the last lesson in Chapter 2, so it will be very short and easy, so hopefully you don't struggle with this. Our key concept for today is enzymes are catalysts for chemical reactions in living things. So a catalyst, if you don't know, is something that encourages an activity. So it doesn't have to be only in science, but in science, a catalyst is something that lowers activation energy. A catalyst are substances that speed up chemical reactions. So you may be wondering how, and the thing they do is they decrease activation energy which we learned in our last video was the energy needed to start a chemical reaction. So in decreasing the activation energy, it increases, increases the reaction rate. So as you can see, the red line is the normal reaction. So this blue arrow is the activation energy, which is higher than the one with the dotted line, which is the catalyzed reaction. So the catalyzed reaction has a lower activation energy, making the process quicker. So it needs less energy to get all the way to the top, and that makes, makes it quicker. So don't get confused that they both end and start in the same spot, but the x-axis is reaction progress, so not necessarily time. So even though they both end in the same spot, the catalyzed reaction is quicker. But the reactant, the energy in the beginning and the energy at the end of the, with the products are the same. So another thing to know is that catalysts aren't used up in the reaction. Enzymes allow chemical reactions to occur under tightly controlled conditions. So what are enzymes? Enzymes are catalysts in living things. So if it's in a living thing, it's called an enzyme, but if it's not, it's just a catalyst. So if you're putting a catalyst into a chemical reaction, like in a lab, it's just called a catalyst. Enzymes are needed for almost all processes. Most enzymes are proteins, and they all end in ASC. So if you're all enzymes, if it has ASC at the end, you know it's an enzyme. So if you're like reading a science paper and you see something end with ASC, you know it's an enzyme and they're mostly proteins within our bodies. So, catalysine is an enzyme. See, it has ACE, ASE, I mean, at the end. And it's used to break down hydrogen peroxide, H2O2. H2O2 is a toxic byproduct of many normal metabolic processes. So, to prevent damage, it must be quickly converted into other less dangerous substances using catalyst. So a catalyst in our body c makes H2O2 into a different substance very, fa very fast. So that's the equation for it. So disruptions in homeostasis can prevent enzymes from functioning. So enzymes function best in a small range of conditions. So changes in temperature and pH can break hydrogen bonds and change the shape of the enzyme. So enzymes are very fragile and if our body temperature changes drastically, they will stop working and eventually cause death. An enzyme that loses its shape and therefore is ability to perform its function has denatured. An enzyme functions depends on its structure. So as we know, st structure and function are related. Structure causes function. So each enzyme has its own structure, therefore its own function. So there's not just one type of enzyme, there's many different types. So what is a fever? A fever or pyrexia is a rise in internal body temperature to levels that are above normal. Average body temperature is about 98 and temperatures above 100.4 are considered to be a fever.
So if our temperature is off, that means our enzymes might stop working. So fevers are very fatal if they get too high. A fever is a defense mechanism to warn off bacteria or viral attack. So it helps con it helps keep our homeostasis or internal body temperature the same. Why is a high fever dangerous? A fever of 105 is considerably deadly. When the temperature of the body exceeds 105 degrees Fahrenheit, enzymes begin to denature rapidly. The result is a loss of homeostasis in the body. When homeostasis is not maintained in the body, the end result is death. This is because the enzymes stop working and they stop helping our body do its natural things and all the proteins end up dying in our body which makes up most of our muscles and everything in our body so everything just stops working. Nothing is made or generated in our body because the enzymes can't do anything. And then you go to the graveyard. An enzyme's structure allows only certain reactants to bind to the enzymes. So one enzyme binds certain things. So substrates and active sites are parts of this equation of an enzyme. So the purple piece is the enzyme and the little notches in it are the active site and the two other reactants are called substrates so they come together into the enzymes active sites and bind together but let's go back one so this enzyme can only bond these two substrates because they fit in the certain keyhole so the lock and key model helps illustrate how enzymes function substrates brought together bond in substrate bonds in the substrates weakened so this is the enzyme the substrates bond together in the active sites their bonds are weakened and brought together and then they're sent out in one whole piece so the catalyzed reaction forms a product that requires that is released from the enzyme so that is the end of this chapter, so end of chapter 2, which is the chemistry of life, and the end of chapter 2, lesson 5, enzymes. So, hope you enjoyed the video and learned a lot. If you miss anything, make sure you go back and review it. And our next video will be starting chapter 3, which is all about cell function. And we will be starting chapter 3, lesson 1, which is about the cell theory which is a major part of biology, so make sure you don't miss that video.